It's the early hours of May 8th, 2021, and officers from the Baltimore County Police Department are responding to multiple 911 calls about a house on fire and gunshots going off in the Winston Estate area of Woodlawn, Baltimore County. Police don't entirely know what they're heading into, but they do know that something serious has happened. Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Go, 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 go! Move in, move in! Do you see? Twenty six, shots fired, shots fired, subject down. Ten four, shots fired, subject down. Forty four, exactly. Maury and Kelly's, Maury and Kelly's. One subject down. Ten four, subject down, ten three on the channel, eight and letting four, You pass me, you pass me. Come on, give quick, 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 quick. Go, 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 go. He's still got the gun. He's still got the gun. He's still got the gun. Police are shooting at 56-year-old YouTuber Everton Brown. He's just murdered three of his neighbours and has attempted to murder many more. As shocking as it may seem to you, those who know Everton say it's to no surprise at all. In fact, many of them say it was only a matter of time before something like this occurred. How do we even end up here then? Well, to figure that out, we need to rewind back to the late 90s. In 1996, an affordable housing development just off the I-70 in Woodlawn, Baltimore County, the Winston Estate neighborhood, was built. Quiet, peaceful, friendly, your average American suburb is how many residents describe the neighborhood. And with little to no serious crime taking place, it's to no surprise that it would attract many prospective buyers. People of all ages, nationalities, and professions would end up filling the homes in the neighborhood. And one of those was none other than a then 30-year-old tractor truck driver, Everton Brown. Although many families and couples lived on the Winston estate, Everton was one of the few single people. However, he wasn't a social recluse. Actually, it was the opposite. His work meant that he didn't have time to get out in the dating pool. Everton would start friendships with residents who lived close by. To on record are George Harville and federal police officer Vogel Hill. Everton was a really nice guy. He did all good things a neighbour would do. I guess that laid the foundation for the friendship we'd have. Everton quickly became known for helping those out when needed. If he needed any advice, a beer to drink, or just a friendly face to chat with, he was the man. After all, he lived by himself, so any social interactions he could get, he would take. Life on the Winston estate was perfect then. A great neighbourhood friendly people, there wasn't much else you could ask for. However, at some point during the early 2000s, a series of unfortunate events would disrupt the order of things, which ultimately led to residents facing a near 20-year harassment campaign. Eventually, it would lead to cold-blooded murder. So, what happened? Well, as you know, Everton became good friends with neighbour George Harville, and one night he was over Everton's for dinner. Everton would go on to explain to him that he had finally put himself on the dating market, and found someone who he could potentially have a long-term relationship with. However, days later, the female in question had told Everton that she was no longer interested because the date didn't go too well. He wanted the situation to move faster than the woman was comfortable with, he was too pushy, and so they parted ways. Everton was also having issues with his employer around that time. You see, the company wasn't reimbursing him money that he had spent on fuel, tolls, and other work-related expenses. 
And believe it or not, from that moment moving forward, Everton changed forever. George Harvell remembers it like it was yesterday. His whole dynamic switched so quickly. Here's a layout of Maury Road in the Winston Estate neighbourhood. This is where Everton and his neighbours live. As you can see, there's a parking lot outside a row of homes. Now, although everyone owns their home, they don't own any of the parking spaces, so anyone can park anywhere they want. However, it's a mutual agreement between residents that the spot that sits directly outside of your home is yours. Amid Everton's bad luck, George's wife would end up parking in Everton's spot. He was out at the time and when he arrived back home, instead of just parking in the tens of other available spaces, he parked directly behind her car. George would end up going to Everton's to question him about his actions, but he wasn't greeted with a friendly face, rather a man who was heated. A small argument ensued, but in the end, George felt bad and immediately tried to de-escalate. Everton was having none of it though, and instead responded with a get off my property and a slam door. Over the next couple of months, Everton, for whatever reason, some say he was having some sort of mental health decline, started to believe that the FBI, CIA, and the local police force were illegally searching his home when he wasn't there, were harassing him in general, and had recruited neighbours to spy on him. Solitude started to take a toll on him. He felt the world was closing in. Everything was starting to shut down. In his mind, it was everybody against him. He really felt we were all conspiring against him somehow. Once Everton started to believe that his neighbours were plotting against him, he began harassing them. More specifically, at that time, George. Reports don't state what he was doing specifically during that period, but we do know that whatever he was doing, it was enough for George and his wife to move away from the area. In hindsight, it was most definitely for the best. In October of 2008, the Baltimore Sun ran a piece on Everton with the headline, Crazy or a Target? Everton Brown insists he's not crazy. I think his neighbours would disagree. The 43-year-old charges that his Baltimore County townhouse is being searched repeatedly by the police. You name the agency, they're busting into his place. I could easily dismiss this as the rantings of a man who needs some help, but Brown has taken that extra step to demand attention. He has attached a large sign covering his front door with large red lettering. My home and vehicle are continuously being searched by the authorities. I've never been involved in any illegal activities. If you have any information, please assist them. And that's not all, he displays a piece of the crawl space floor that he says he leaves open so police who come to search don't have to break anything. He says authorities got his alarm code from the alarm company and he knows they come in because every time he leaves, he puts tape on the door and notices the pieces are broken when he returns. He's using scotch tape. So, as you can see, Everton was clearly going through some sort of mental health decline. Many neighbours noticed what was going on and would offer some help, but in return, they were met with harassment. Out of options then, many contacted the authorities, but officers would tell residents that he wasn't breaking any laws, so there wasn't much they could do. They then tried to contact the homeowners association, but again, nothing was done. In the end, neighbors came up with a plan. They had noticed that ignoring him instead of engaging made his behavior calm down a little bit. And they also managed to secure a peace order. In other words, a type of restraining order that applies to non-intimate relationships. These tactics, this plan, would help bring some level of calmness to the neighborhood for the foreseeable future. However, Everton moved his antics to YouTube. On his YouTube channel, named after himself, he would air his grievances with law enforcement officials, would travel to the White House to ask then-President Obama to see if he could tell the FBI to stop harassing him, and would film stars in the sky claiming that they were drones. This is the front of my home before the snow came. Tell me, is this criminal? This is the this is uh, the cleanup during the snow after the snow on January 25th. See the the front end loader is shoveling snow up on my up on my sidewalk. 
and on the front of my home, on the front of my property, on my steps. Is that justice? That's the FBI work. That's the FBI's justice. When an individual has been targeted for eight years for absolutely no reason, throws a complete bucket of snow on the front of my property, on my steps, on my sidewalk, then they will bring the, the snow blow in and blow snow all on my property. Is that justice? This is the FBI at work. How can it be? That should be criminal. That should hold a penalty. Now here, uh, now he goes down to the other home, the other townhouses, and clean all the snow away from from the front of their property, but he dumps it on mine. This is the, this is a family member of the neighbor, of the neighbor. This, this family member does not live in the home, but she believes it's not right. And it is not right. How can it be? How can that be acceptable? How can that be, how can a person be targeted in this way? This, this, this should be concerns when someone is coming in your home each and every day for absolutely no reason, conducting their investigation in your home when you have done nothing wrong for eight years, you have to be concerned about what is going on in your home. When you know the targeting has one agenda, is destruction of your life. When you have done nothing wrong, how can this be? Please explain it to me. How can this be? How can this be justified? It's a little after 6:30. I'm at Sam's Club in Ellicott. Not Sam's Club. I'm at Walmart in Ellicott City. This is this is a plane here that's flying. You know, monitoring me. Two of them crossed right in front of each other. It made me want to really document it. Where's the other one? I'm gonna stick this. This one here. This is one here, flying real low, slow, coming over Walmart, wow. Okay, there's they another one coming over the building now. Let's see, you are here. See if I can find you coming over the building. Over top of the building, come on. This is the third one. one. One already went the other way. What am I looking at here? Back out. Both of them gonna cross path right there. See them flying, see them flying. Where the other one? Come on. He gonna cross path. He really low there. Where is he? One is there. Where you at? I can't pick you up. There you is. There you is flashing right there. There you is flashing down there. Yup. There you are there. Look at that. Look how low he flying. Look how low he flying. That is. This is crazy. And one went behind me. One that actually went behind me. Look at him. Look how low the bill. Look how low he is flying. This is no helicopter. This is a military plane. I guess it's a drone or it, you, you don't hear a damn thing, so it must be a drone. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that, man. Man, how can they how, how is this possible? They act like I'm a I'm a I'm just this 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 mobster or 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 or, 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 or whatever, some some criminal. Yeah, like I'm this this big old criminal. Where you at? I can't pick you up. I'm trying to pick you up. You the second. You the third one here. Third one in this maze. Oh, you're going through the trees. It's a tree kind of blocking you there. You, you almost standing still. But I'm gonna get you, man.
in I'm in Dayton, New Jersey at my, my first stop. I'm a truck driver. And I'm in Dayton, New Jersey, and you know, every day there are numerous drones. I mean, as soon as I hit New Jersey, I, I don't know what it is. I just, I just see them. All I have to do is look to my left, look out my, my driver's door, and I can just see them. There, 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 there's, there's, there's two here. It was one flying over top. It's, all I have to get out, all I have to do is get out, and I can see a half a dozen drones. I, you know, the, I, it, it's hard to actually actually record them because the technology, I guess, that they have with 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 this uh, with the aircraft, you know, that, that does something to your camera. It's 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 difficult, you know, and I'm, I'm you know to actually record them, especially while you're riding, compared to you know. That, that was one I couldn't, I, he, he done went way back. I couldn't stay on him. And this guy here that's coming, he's coming at me. But you know, they, they have technology that, that just, just distort your camera and then I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a professional at this and then it's not a very good camera. So, you know, it, it's, it, it's difficult to actually record them. But, you know, after, after the past four months just seeing them every day, I, I, I just figured I'd try to get the camera out. The battery was dead. I had to charge the battery up and just, just, just get a, get a, get a, uh, capture a picture of them. It's, it's, it's incredible. You know, the, the day is, it's about, it's 8.48, 8.48 on the 4th of December. And he's, he's going over top overhead there. Let's see if I can open the door. You know, once they know you're taping, it, 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 it gets worse. When they're going through the trees, it seems like you can get a better shot of them, but they can't, they, 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 don't, they don't get a good shot at it. They, I guess they can't distinguish that you, you're filming them. That's what it seemed like to me. Look at him going overhead there. Look at him. Look at him. Is that military? Military style there, military. This, this is no, no, n not a drone for, 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 for private use or for amateur use. These are drones, these are military style drones. There go another one coming over the building there. You don't hardly have any light on. Let's see if I can get to them. This is Everton Brown, and I've been victimized and violated for more than seven years by the Federal Bureau of Investigation for absolutely no reason. It goes in my house each and every day. Each and every day. It goes in my vehicle each and every day. Only because I'm a black man. When a black man owns property, he's a criminal. When a white man owns property, he has worked hard, followed the rules. He has sacrificed. But a black man is a criminal. He should be, he should be investigated and be, and be incarcerated. That's how it is. So I'm gonna be out here, I'm gonna be out here for a minute, especially like how they caught you. Especially what? I'm gonna be out here, I'm just be out here doing what I do. Okay, is this your current address? You still live in Windsor Mill? I still live in Windsor Mill. The, the government don't want me to though. All right. Well, we can't stop you from being here, but you're here parked illegally. Okay, I'm gonna move it right now. And I was I was on the way I was on the I was on the way of moving it in a second. I was getting ready to put my signs in the in the back of the truck until you pulled up. Okay. Here's your ID back. Thank you. If you want to stand here, that's fine. You just gotta park your car legally, all right? Park my car illegally. I understand how it is. It's just another way of trying to victimize another black man because you don't want me to speak out. You don't want me to speak out, so you try to suppress my voice right, we'll in you. any way, in every way you can. Constitutional representatives. Talk to my constitutional representative. Yeah. They they can't do they can't do nothing for they they can't nah they don't make the law. Yeah, they, do. they don't make the law when 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 a man is choked to death. They don't make the law when a man is choked to death and have done nothing wrong. When a man is shot at when a man is shot at the top of his head. He, when a man is shot at the top of his head. The peace order would eventually run out, but residents continued to ignore Everton, and for the time being, that kept tensions at a minimal. However, tempers would flare once again when Ivory Williams, his wife Cara, and their son Williams Jr. moved into the neighbourhood.
The Williams family were one of Everton's new immediate neighbours. On the day that they arrived, they were met with conflict because he thought the FBI had planted the family there as spies. New to the area then and not understanding the status quo, the family would engage in arguments with Everton over the next few weeks. To make matters worse, Everton's dog became ill and died during that time. In his head, he believed that the Williams were poisoning his dog, which had led to his death. Over the next few years, Everton continued to have small spats with multiple neighbours. They tried to avoid and ignore him where they could, like they did in the past, but it was almost impossible. Locals would make multiple calls to police, but officers repeatedly had to tell them that no laws had been broken so they couldn't do anything about it. The homeowners association was again brought in for multiple meetings, but it never went anywhere. Even the trash man was eventually targeted. Believe it or not, in response to the harassment, the trash man physically assaulted Everton. However, this response made his behavior worse. Following the assault, he began using a megaphone and wandered the streets in the early hours of the morning, shouting that he was being targeted by the FBI and that his neighbours were involved. In 2017, Ismail Quintanilla, his wife Sarah, and their son, 17-year-old Anthony, moved in next door to Everton. Sarah had moved to the United States from El Salvador in search of a better life for herself. When she touched down, she moved in with her uncle and immediately began working at a local McDonald's, where she'd later meet her future husband, Ismail, a full-time construction worker. In 2003, the pair would end up giving birth to a beautiful boy, Anthony. And after living in a tiny apartment for years, the family finally purchased their dream home in the Winston Estate neighbourhood after saving up for it. Sadly, what they didn't know was that their neighbour was going through a severe mental health crisis and no one was helping. Just like when the Williams family arrived in the neighbourhood, Everton began to think that the FBI planted the Quintanilla family to spy on him. When we first made contact with Everton, it wasn't a great first impression. He kept looking at us with a mean stare. He was cursing at us, mumbling under his breath. For some reason, none of the neighbours let the Quintanillas know of Everton's harassment campaign, but they were soon about to find out about it, and it went down exactly how it did with George Harvell way back when. Shortly after moving into the neighbourhood, Everton would park his car in the parking space that would be considered the Quintanilla family's parking spot. They didn't care though, it was no issue, so they parked their vehicle in Everton's spot. However, as he considered the spot his property, he found an issue with it, and so an argument broke out. Eventually, police were called to de-escalate, and they did, but moving forward, they were now a number one target. The last documented harassment incident took place in March of 2021. On that occasion, Williams Jr. had pulled into what would be considered his own parking spot after spending some time away from the home. As he pulled in, so did Everton, right beside him. He then got out of his vehicle and pointed a flashlight at Williams Jr. When Williams Jr. got out of his vehicle to confront him, Everton pulled a baseball bat out of his car and a chase began. Fortunately, Williams Jr. made it to his home where he took shelter. The latest incident was one where Everton presented an actual threat to someone. Prior to that, it was only ever small spat. After this had taken place, residents feared that moving forward, it was going to snowball and someone was going to get either A, hurt, or B, killed. We told police either he was going to kill someone or vice versa. It got to the point where people were ready to pack up and leave the neighbourhood. Following the ordeal, the Williams family managed to get a peace order out against Everton. And on May 5th, 2021, another one was secured by a third party. Details about that specific order aren't ever revealed. Whatever the case was though, the peace orders wouldn't work because just a few days after the latest one was approved, Everton would go on a murderous rampage. Baltimore County, what is the address of the emergency? Hello? Baltimore County, 911, what is the address of the emergency? We just had a house blow up, and the, and the house next to it is on fire. It's on a house, wait, wait. a house exploded? Yes. Okay, what's the, the address? Exploded. We don't know. 
Okay, what's the closest intersection? Um, um, Fairbrook and Johnny Cake Road. Is what street is the house on? Murray, Murray Road. Murray Road. Murray Road. Yes. All right. Yes. Take a deep breath for me, okay? Oh my gosh! All we heard was pop, 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 and then the house blew up. Okay. Oh my God. And Murray Road. What's the closest intersection to where the house is located? Uh, Kelly's Lane. Kelly's hey, Lane. House. Yes. Okay. Take Kelly's a deep court. breath, okay? I'm sorry. It's Kelly's Court. Kelly's Court. Kelly's Court and Murray Road, and the second house is on fire. I'm so sorry, but the house, the house is burning really bad. Okay, take like, a really, deep breath for me, okay? And there's one guy who lives in there. Oh, my God. We don't see him. We don't see him. All right, and just repeat oh, that intersection oh. back to make sure that I have it correct. We heard the gun. We, we heard gunfire. Okay. Oh. Okay, what's your name? My name is... I just so happen to be... In the house. I just so so, okay, I'm, Miss, I'm, Miss, I need you to listen to I'm me for sorry. one second. I know you're upset, but I need to get information from you. Okay. I want to make sure okay. that I heard you. You said you heard gunfire and then a house exploded and it's on fire. Yes. Yes. And there's a victim on the ground. We've got a victim on the ground shot. Okay. We got a victim on the ground. Okay. A female, and she's got blood all in front of her. Okay, is she breathing? I don't know. She's just lying on the ground. Okay. She doesn't look like she's moving. She's not moving. She's not moving. Okay. We got help. We got a lot of help coming to you, okay? What's the phone number that you're calling from? Uh, my daughter's phone number. Uh... Okay. <laughs> it's the gas. Oh. And do you see anybody with the gun? I need you to get to safety right now. We're in the house. We're Miss, I need you to get in the house, close the door, and duck below the windows. He blew up his house. I understand that he blew up his house, but I need you to get to safety right now. Oh, my God. He shot the baby. He shot the baby? He shot a lady, and then he came back out shooting again, and he's still holding a gun. He's still holding a gun. He's still holding a gun. Okay, what race is the man that's holding the gun? The guy who lives in the house that blew up. Is he black, white, Hispanic, or Asian? I'm sorry, what'd you say? Is he black, white, Asian? He's a black male. Black male? In his late, yes, probably in his late 50s. Late 50s? And he's holding, yes, and he holds a gun in his hand. And he's wearing all black, and he's standing in front of his house while it's burning. Okay. Now, listen, do you have any victims do you see on the ground out there, Miss? Yes. There's a lady standing. There's a lady laying on the ground by a car, and she's not moving. Okay. The police is here. The police are there? Yes. Okay, go ahead and disconnect and talk to the officers, okay? I can't. He's shooting okay. the police. He's shooting. He shot the cop? He's, he's shooting at the police. Okay. Oh, God. I can't stand by my window. He's shooting at the police. He shoot. <laughs> the smoke guy. <laughs> All right. He shot at the police. Oh, God. Okay. He shot him. They shot him. They shot the man? Yes. The cop okay. Did. Okay. Uh, he did not. He act like he's there. He still shoots. I'm sorry. Uh, I gotta get away from my window. The okay. It's burning up really bad. Okay. Oh, I I need you to stay in safety. Okay. Are you below the windows? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I it's okay. To... I need you to take a deep breath. Okay. Is anybody in your home injured? No, we're fine. Okay. We're fine. 
Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, how many victims help. do you see on the ground? Thank you for getting help here. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome, ma'am. Take a deep breath, okay? Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Shots fired, shots fired, shots fired. Drop the gun, drop the gun, drop the gun. Go, 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 go. Move in, move in. Do you see? Twenty six, shots fired, shots fired, subject down. Ten four, shots fired, subject down. Forty four, exactly. Maury and Kelly's, Maury and Kelly's. One subject down. You pass me, you pass me. Come in, come in, quick, 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 quick. Go, back, 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 back. He's still got the gun, he's still got the gun. He's still got the gun. On the morning of May 8th, 2021, Everton Brown would blow his house up and then proceeded to murder his neighbours in cold blood. Once the explosion had occurred, many residents went outside to see what had happened. Some of them came face to face with Everton and when they did, they would end up dodging bullets as he opened fire on them. I peered out my front door to see what was going on and saw a man dressed in all black standing outside. I shouted to see if he was alright. When the person turned around, I realised it was Everton. Then I saw the gun, it looked like it was jammed. He tried to unjam it, so I quickly ran inside and slammed the door. Although some, like Ivory, were fortunate enough not to catch a bullet, others, like the Quintanilla family, weren't so lucky. Following the brief encounter with Ivory, Everton made his way to the Quintanilla residence. When he arrived, he kicked the door in and shot Sarah. Anthony ran up the stairs to hide and contacted the police while Ismail intervened. Sadly, he was stabbed multiple times and was eventually shot to death. Ismail's intervention allowed Sarah to flee from the house. However, Everton soon caught up with her and killed her execution style. Witnesses say she begged for her life, but he didn't care and shot her in the street. On May 1st, 2021, just a week before this whole incident went down, 24-year-old university graduate Sagar Gamir moved into the neighbourhood. He was one of Everton's immediate neighbours. Sagar had immigrated to the United States after being granted a full scholarship to study computer science. He was hoping that he'd be able to secure a good paying job in the near future and that way he could send money back home. He hoped to use his education to give back to the needy in Nepal. If somebody needed help, he liked to help right away. He was a bright light for everybody, his whole country. Sadly, ladies and gentlemen, Sagar was gunned down by Everton Brown on May 8th, 2021, after he ran to Sarah's aid. The person who lived in the property with him was also shot in the process of trying to help her, however, he would go on to survive. In the end, Everton would meet the same fate as the Quintanilla couple and Sagar. He was gunned down by police after opening fire on them. How is it possible for this individual to have so many contacts with police? And according to case search, uh, he has been found guilty of improperly maybe carrying a handgun in a vehicle. How can he still have a weapon? So as you can imagine, we, we have a lot of questions right now. 
Um, this is, is a very extensive time frame. Um, we're, we're looking back for about 30 years of, of contact with this individual. Um, there are a lot of incidents that we are looking back on. We are actually having a team scrub every single encounter that we have documented with this individual. Um, as we begin to dig through this information and as we begin to come up with some theories on this um, or, or, or look back to, um, you know, look back to look forward, uh, we will continue to put out information. We wanted to have this press conference today. We felt that it was critically important to be able to stand up here and tell you what we do know, tell you the, the timeline as it stands right now. But again, there is more work to be done ahead of us. We have days and weeks of work ahead of us to, to really look into this. And the, you said the mobile crisis team has had contact <coughs> with the individual? Yes, they have. have. Did they diagnose any kind of uh, mental illness or et cetera? Was he on medication? So our mobile crisis team doesn't per se diagnose people. We send them out to situations when people are in behavioral crisis, um, but uh, they, they see multiple people over the course of the year. As you know, um, the county executive recently announced that we're going to be expanding that program. Um, part of what we're looking back on right now are, are every single encounter that, that mobile crisis, along with our patrol officers and our outreach team, had with this individual. But based on your investigation so far, have you determined whether or not the individual suffered from some kind of mental illness? You know, right now we, we, we don't have anything that is uh, a diagnosis, but I think that uh, all of us collectively, based on some of the, the behavior that we know this individual was, um, you know, engaged in in the past, um, encounters he had with our police officers, comments that he made to our officers as well as neighbors, uh, I certainly think that, that we can infer that he had some type of mental illness. Um, as for what his specific diagnosis or diagnoses were that I don't know right now. Chief, along that thread, are you aware of any extreme risk protective orders um, you know, enacted involving this suspect specifically by officers in the department? So right now, that's uh, some of what we're looking back on. Um, as you know, for, for ERPO or extreme risk protective order, there are some very um, specific elements that have to be present for that. Um, as of right now, uh, we have not seen any, but part of what we're continuing to do as we take a look backwards is to see, um, and you know, when ERPO was enacted in 2018, so it's through, a, we've had 30 plus years of encounters with this individual. It's only been, been enacted, you know, over the last few years. I will tell you, you know, our department absolutely has embraced, you know, red flag, embraced ERPO. Um, since it was enacted, we've had over 200 encounters with individuals where um, ultimately firearms have been seized from their homes. But again, we're so preliminary in this investigation, but we will follow up with that. That is one of the things we're focused on. And I may have missed the metric. How many interactions with the mobile crisis team have there been? Do you have that information? I don't have the specific numbers, but I know that there have been multiple. Thank you. Sure. Multiple neighbors said that they believe that this could have been prevented and that they're upset that more wasn't done to address his mental health issues, um, saying they came to police and the homeowners association saying they knew something like this was going to happen and it was only a matter of time. Do you think there was something that could have been done to prevent this? And like the county executive alluded to, their changes you guys are planning or hoping to make to prevent something like this from happening in the future? So, so I'll say this, first of all, um, you know, th this was a, a horrible, horrific incident and we are committed to, to picking through every every piece of evidence, every report, every encounter. But mental illness in itself is not a crime. And so part of what we're doing is looking through to see, you know, could there have been points of, of intervention, uh, maybe not even just by police, but in general with this individual. But we don't know that right now, right? I mean, there is so, we are so preliminary in a very, very lengthy investigation that, that frankly, um, and, and the county executive I think said it best, really we're just asking for patience because we want to make sure uh, we owe it to the victims and to their families to make sure that we do a very thorough investigation and that when we provide information to you, we're, we're certain about the facts and it's just going to take a little bit of time for us to do that. Chief, what kind of explosive devices were found in this car? They were incendiary devices. Um, without going into to too much detail, I'd prefer not to do that right now because of where we are in the investigation. Um, but uh, we don't have information on how long they had been there. We just recovered them. Could you at least describe how dangerous they were? Absolutely. These, these devices um, absolutely had the, the capability 
to uh, be utilized, and um, this individual had the ability to, to utilize them that day. Yeah, Last question. Do you believe that he used an explosive device in his home? Is that something that you're looking into to cause the fire? So right now our, our fire investigators have uh, are, are still continuing with their investigation. Um, we will, again, put out more information on that as we are, are conclusive in, in terms of after we look through all the evidence. Great. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Many involved in this case say it could have been avoided if someone, preferably a mental health team, intervened. They'd also predicted that Everton's behaviour would eventually leave someone dead. But because Everton wasn't diagnosed with any mental health issue, nor would he accept any help, there wasn't anything anyone could do. Again, he wasn't breaking any laws, so police couldn't arrest and jail him either. In other words then, residents of the Winston Estate neighborhood were neglected by the state and ultimately multiple people would sadly lose their lives.